Hey everyone! I'm so super excited for today's video because I finally get to share with you all the test that I did, the massive 10 foundation test, and let's just jump right into it. So I started off, uh, of course, with primer. I used the same products for each foundation. I used the same setting powder, same setting spray, the same primer, and those are the Pat McGrath Labs. Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Primer. I used, for my setting powder, I used the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. And for my setting spray, we used the, of course, Holy Grail Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Those were the same for every single product. I also applied every product with a damp beauty sponge. I used the same beauty sponge for every product. That one, this one, is the one from Makeup Eraser. It's got a flat part here, rounded parts here, another flat part here. I used this sponge for every application, washed it in between, of course, had to give every single one a fair chance. If you have been following me on Instagram throughout this challenge, I did post pictures every single day that I wore these. And I will tell you about each specific picture. You can go back and reference those. Uh, so all the pictures were unedited, unfiltered, and they were taken outdoors in the car, in the shade, at the exact same time every day before I went to work at my muggle job, which was about 1.50 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time. If it was a cloudy day, which was noted in my Instagram post, then the picture may have appeared cooler. If it was a sunny day, then the picture may have appeared warmer. And I wanted to note those things in case anyone thought that we might be shade twins, because of course, lighting is super duper important. Other important things to know about the wear test for all of these foundations. I wore all of them for eight to 10 hours. Most of them were for 10 hours straight. I subjected them to both the Florida heat and humidity as well as spending time in air conditioning. And I was fully masked for all of the tests because that is required at my muggle job. So that's all the test information. Those are the nitty gritty details. Let me tell you about the foundations that I tested and then I'll jump into each one individually. That way you can know what's coming and you can skip ahead. So the first one I tested was Urban Decay Stay Naked. Second one I tested was Yoma, mm, Oma Beauty Say What Foundation. Third one, Becca Cosmetics Ultimate Coverage. Fourth one, Bare Minerals Bare Pro. Fifth one, Estee Lauder Double Wear. Sixth one, Pure Cosmetics, 4-in-1 Tinted Moisturizer. Sixth one, Bare Minerals Original Liquid Mineral Foundation, one of the newer ones that had come out on the market. Pure Lease Perfect Glow BB Cream. Bare Minerals Primetime BB Cream. And last but not least, the Range Beauty True Intentions Foundation. That's the order they're going to come up with. And of course, all of this will be linked and described in the description box down below so that you can jump ahead to whatever section you want to look at. I'll list the shade names and everything and all of the testing information as well. Take a deep breath and let's get into it. Oh, by the way, not wearing any makeup whatsoever right now because I want to be able to swatch each of these live for you as well. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and put my hair up because I just got it dyed about a week ago and I don't want to get any foundation in it. Alrighty. Bun time. Okay. 
So the, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to, actually, I'll be right back. Hold on, because I'm going to need a towel for this. We're going to need some backup. Alrighty, I am back. I've got a towel, some alcohol, makeup wipes, all the things so that I can clean in between everything. Uh, we're going to start off with the first one, which was the Urban Decay. The <sighs> we will start off with the first one, which is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation. That's this one right here. I used shade 50WY. And this formula, these are the notes that I made at the end of every single day that I wore these. Good formula, slightly too yellow, felt weightless, applies easy, feels like skin, medium coverage, may be able to build to full, uh, natural finish. So let's put a little dab, a little dab of this on my cheek. There we go. Big old dab. This is what the towel's for, so that I don't have foundation over my fingers interfering every time I do one of these swatches. And then as I go through this, you can see how everything will oxidize and look next to each other because something may not look too yellow on camera or too orange or too pink, yada yada, but when it's compared next to one another, that's when the details can become more evident at least on my skin. So the next one was the Oma Beauty Say What Foundation. This one right here, and that was in shade Honey Honey T1W. I'm gonna cut all this mess into mess out. So this formula, lightweight formula, blends super easy, slightly orangish yellow upon initial application. However, it settled into my skin, looking natural. Medium may be able to build to full coverage, natural finish. Here we go. Urban Decay, Oma Beauty. Next one we have is the Becca Cosmetics Ultimate Coverage. I debated not putting this one in the test because Becca Cosmetics is going out of business come fall, but since many of you own it and I still own it and it's like half off everywhere right now, I figured I would throw it in anyways. Just, you know, why not? So my Becca Foundation notes here. Oh, this is shade Driftwood, which is 3W2. It's not gonna focus, because um, Wayne Goss and I have the same camera issues. That's just how it is. So this one is super full coverage, like super full coverage. The undertone felt really nice uh, on my olive skin. It was, I thought it would be great for stage, photo shoot, full glam, not for me, what I like, an everyday foundation, because I'm not a full coverage everyday gal, uh, it does have a matte finish versus what I call a natural finish. So let me show you what that looks like. That is our Becca foundation. Now, the next one, this is number four. This is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro foundation. I used shade Sandstone 16. 
And let's go through my notes real quick. Uh, full coverage, good undertone, blends easy, good overall foundation, matte finish. So that means it's going to be good whether you're doing photo, stage, everyday, that sort of thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what it looks like next to its relatives. Going to be going all the way through this. So, next one we have Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Makeup. I used shade 3W1 Tawny. And my notes here had more, a little bit more of a peachy undertone compared to the others. It was buildable, matte finish, relatively transfer resistant, uh, and went really well with all of my other products. So let's go with this one. Estee Lauder. Oh. The other thing I think I forgot to mention in the beginning is that all of these shades are considered comparable or close matches uh, according to most websites shade matching tools like foundation.com or each brand's website themselves sephora ulta all those things so that's why these shades are the ones that i have and am testing for you all estee lauder we are halfway there we are halfway there so bear with me Number six, the Pure Cosmetics 4-in-1 Tinted Moisturizer. This is in shade MN3. And now my desk is getting a mess. So we have here, lightweight, non-greasy, too light for my skin, needs more warmth, definitely transfers, so you have to set it with powder, has a weird grayish undertone. Also keep in mind, as I am talking about the appearance of these base products, I am referencing them as far as how they look on an everyday basis, in the mirror, in natural light, not how they look on camera, whether it's video, uh, with, you know, a ring light, how it looks when you're taking pictures, flash, no flash, haven't done all of that. Those will be individual dedicated videos that I do. This is comparing strictly best undertone for medium to tan warm olive complexions. That's what this test is. So, the Pure Cosmetics. Alrighty, my next one is the Bare Minerals Original Liquid Foundation in shade Golden Beige 13. This one had sheer coverage, lightweight, yellow undertone, but blends out okay. Definitely not transfer resistant. Again, another one that you must set with powder, and even then, it's not going to be transfer resistant. I, uh, here, pump up. It's a twist top. We have... Three more to go. Three more. Do I have enough room on my face? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Next one is the Pure Lease BB Cream Perfect Glow in shade Medium Tan. And my notes on this one, satin finish, pulls slightly orange, medium coverage, satin, dewy, matte kind of 
feel to it. Also very, feels very skin-like, but not transfer resistant. So that's eight, two more. Next one is the Bare Minerals Primetime BB Cream in shade medium. Good undertone, feels silky smooth on skin, like a primer, smooths that texture, looks like you're wearing nothing, relatively transfer resistant as long as you set it with powder because it feels more primer-like than actual foundation-like. Now I am applying these swatches, again, very thick, much thicker than I would actually wear the foundation so that you can see the true color of the foundation or the base product. Last but not least, this is the Range Beauty True Intentions Foundation in shade Liquid Sun. And my notes here say, great undertone, natural finished buildable formula. Uh, for some reason, didn't mix well with something in my routine. Uh, however, I'm thinking the foundation maybe wasn't dry before I took my makeup sponge to press in the setting spray, because that was uh, something that a technique I had been trying out uh, after my setting spray, setting powder, situation was letting it semi-dry and then going over again with the uh, sponge and I think that's what did it why it didn't mix well not that it didn't mix well with the base and top products but because that technique so that is it that is all of them one more swatch I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back in a few minutes. I'm gonna wait for everything to dry down, see if it oxidizes a little bit so that you can see the full range of what we are working with. Be right back. Alrighty, everyone, we are back and it's been like 20 to 30 minutes. So this is what we have right now as far as oxidation goes. Let's do a quick recap, Urban Decay, 50WY, Oma Beauty, Honey Honey, T1W, Becca, Ultimate Coverage, Driftwood, 3W2, Bare Minerals, Bare Pro, this is Sandstone 16, this is Estee Lauder Double Wear in Tawny, 3W1, this one here is the Pure Cosmetics 4-in-1 Tinted Moisturizer in MN3, this is the Bare Minerals Original Liquid Mineral Foundation in shade Golden Beige 13. This is the Pure Lease Perfect Glow BB Cream in shade Medium Tan. This is the Bare Minerals Primetime BB Cream in shade Medium. And this is the Range Beauty True Intentions Foundation in shade Liquid Sun. Now, all of these we tested to see how they worked for olive undertones. That is what I am. I am an olive undertone because these are supposed to be equivalent or close to shade matched shades, uh, according to all the websites, Sephora, Foundation.com, you name it. So one more look here. Then I'm going to take all of these off. I'm going to put on a little bit of makeup and we are going to talk about our winner, why they won and why the others did not. Alrighty, everyone, we are back. Here is my face wearing the winner, 
you already know who it is. I announced it on my social media, if you follow me. So that is the Oma Beauty Say What Foundation in Honey Honey T1W. That is our winner for these 10 base products for Olive Skin. Now, let's go through and I will tell you why I decided that Oma Beauty was going to be the winner for the testing these 10 particular foundations. Quick recap, uh, we had the UD Stay Naked, the Oma Beauty Say What Foundation, Becca Ultimate Coverage, Bare Minerals Bare Pro, Estee Lauder, Stay in Place Double Wear, Pure Cosmetics Tinted Moisturizer, Bare Minerals Original Liquid Mineral Foundation, Pure Lease BB Cream, Bare Minerals Primetime BB Cream, and Range Beauty True Intentions Foundation. The primer that I used for the test for each one of these foundations was the Pat McGrath Labs Sublime Perfecting Face Primer. I used the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder, the loose one, and my Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray to finish everything off. That was the same for every single product. I applied everything with a damp beauty blender. Sorry, not beauty blender. I used a beauty sponge and I used the one from Makeup Eraser. Each product was worn eight to 10 hours in the Florida heat and humidity, as well as in the air conditioning. And I was fully masked for that time. All of that is important to know so that you understand how the environmental factors might change how a foundation plays on your skin and how it might oxidize throughout the day. The pictures that are on my Instagram, if you go back and check out my Instagram for all of the pictures, of the foundations. They were unedited, unfiltered, taken outdoors, in the car in the shade at the same time every day before work, which was about 1.45 to 2 p.m. Eastern time. It is noted in each post, whether it was a cloudy day or a sunny day, because cloudy days are going to make everything appear cooler. Sunny days, everything's gonna appear a little warmer. This is what I look like inside of my house wearing the foundation. So, immediately I took away the Pure Lease BB Cream and the Pure 4-in-1 Tinted Moisturizer. This one was too dark, well, not too dark, sorry. The undertone was too orange, so this one came away. This one, was too light and gave me a weird grayish cast. These two immediately got taken away. Again, this test was strictly for best undertone for olive skin. Not the formula, not the packaging, not how did it mix with other products, etc., etc. Strictly best undertone for olive skin. So, took those two away immediately because of that. I then took away the Bare Minerals Original Mineral Liquid Foundation as well as the Urban Decay Stay Naked because they were too yellow for my olive skin. Next ones that I took away were the Estee Lauder Double Wear because it had a little bit too much peach. The Becca ultimate coverage because it had a little bit uh, too much gray in it. It was a good undertone. It was by no means a bad undertone, but it had just a little bit too much gray. It uh, didn't necessarily bring life to the skin, so to speak. So the Bare Minerals Bare Pro, good overall foundation, little on the yellow side slightly. This one was also good, but it legit comes in two shades, light and medium, and if you are not my exact skin tone, it's going to be difficult to find your color. Uh, but anyway, again, this one uh, was not perfect. Slightly too much uh, gray-ish but 
still good. Uh, Range Beauty was very close second to the Oma Beauty and uh, the way they laid throughout the day uh, was the deciding factor um, because the Oma Beauty had the least amount of oxidation as far as changing on your skin. Uh, and the Range Beauty one changed a little bit. Not super noticeable. That's where the camera is. Not super noticeable, but noticeable enough that I saw a difference because I was doing a large foundation test. So Range Beauty went to the side, but it was two. It was definitely number two, definitely number two. So the Oma Beauty, I know I said when I was going through everything with my notes that it had a slight orange undertone, but then it blended out well. And the reason why it won uh, was because of the way it blended and how it looked on my skin after it settled down, so to speak. So there's always the initial application and then what the foundation looks like after it dries and melds with your skin. This one blended the best with my skin, including the dry down. And throughout the day, it did not oxidize one little bit. What you saw was what you got after everything dried down. The initial application was what felt like it was going to be a little bit orange. However, it was not. As you can see, here, let me show you. Uh, I'm gonna show you my chest because I don't have any foundation on here. I've got foundation face to neck. And again, I tested how well these looked in person. <laughs> not necessarily how well they look on video or in pictures in person, looking at the mirror for your everyday wear. But on camera, this is what a close up of my face looks like. Neck, and then chest. The most similar in color as it blends down to my neck. So from here down, there is no foundation. And as you can see, it all goes together seamlessly. So I could get away with the darker color because this area is the lightest of my overall body. Uh, there's a whole story behind that. Another day, another time. But that's why Oma Beauty wins is because not only does it have the best undertone for olive skin, but it wears the undertone wears the best throughout the day as well. I, I swear to God, it's got like some kind of color matching technology in the formula or something where it might apply and look not the right color when you first put it on. And then when you start blending it around, you're like, okay. And then you keep going, it dries down and you're like, hmm, I see you. So, the winner is Oma Beauty Say What Foundation. For me, this is Honey Honey T1W. And uh, obviously, uh, if you are familiar with Oma Beauty, uh, they have different formula within that line. And this one, Honey Honey, is supposed to be specifically designed for olive skin tones. So, uh, I'm not surprised that it was the one that won uh, because of that factor. Uh, and most of these other foundation products or base products that I tested were not necessarily created with olive skin or olive undertones in mind. A few of them were. Uh, the Becca Ultimate Coverage uh, in Driftwood 3W2 is advertised on, uh, I believe it was Ulta website as one for olive skin because this one, it was kind of funny, like I looked at three different websites, the Becca website, Sephora, and Ulta, and each one described this as a different undertone, uh, but Ulta described it for olive skin. 
Uh, so that was another one that was going to be good. And then, of course, the Range Beauty liquid in Liquid Sun. The thing about Range Beauty is that they talk about their foundations for the forgotten shades and the forgotten undertones, which of course includes a wide range of skin tones from fair to medium to dark. And olive undertones are one of the undertones that hardly anyone makes a foundation for olive undertones. That's why I've got 10 here that I tried uh, before finding one that felt and looked good and felt like I could wear it every single day. But as far as for olive undertones, if you want a foundation uh, for, designed for olive undertones, these are my top three favorites. As far as, again, specifically for undertone, Oma Beauty is number one. Uh, and then Range Beauty is number two. And then the Becca is number three. Thank you so much for coming here and chatting with me, listening to me ramble on for however long this video is since I have yet to edit it and listening to what I have to say about each of these products. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. If there are other products you want me to try, I can't promise I can afford to purchase them because I do buy everything myself, but I will certainly do my best uh, when I can. I do plan on trying more foundations because I want to really curate a collection of foundations for all of skin tones so that there is, it, there is a good resource for all of skin that you know, you can go to and reliably say this is for all of undertones. <laughs> now, um, not that these other products aren't good. I could use any single one of them if I wanted to, but I do have to adjust them. I have to mix them with other products to get them to match, like, you know, a blue mixer or a green mixer, sometimes mixing multiple different foundation shades. Sometimes it's the powder or the blush, the bronzer. Sometimes I have to just do some kind of magic, you know, to get it to really work. And the only magic that I have to do with these three to make them work is to use my setting powder, my translucent setting powder. That's it. Like, I've never had a foundation where I just had to use setting powder and it worked. Everything else, you know. So, <sighs> thank you so much again for joining me. I will see you all next time. If you uh, remember, all of the details will be in the description box below. Uh, all of the, what I'm wearing currently right now will be in the description box below. Um, and my social media up here and down here or over here. We'll see. This is for editing. <laughs> uh. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.